everybody what is going on everybody welcome back to the cyperx page in today's video breakdown jam-packed with lots of information for you all today we're going to be going over the hyperledger foundation linux foundation which we've discussed in the past talking about ripple stellar hedera and casper if you all enjoy these deep video breakdowns going over valuable information smash that thumbs up button and subscribe don't forget that we are going to be doing a giveaway once we reach 15,000 subscribers. We noticed that about 25% of our viewers are still unsubscribed for the channel. So we're going to start here. In today's video breakdown, I have a series of video clips to play for you all and some interesting fundamentals to go over. So this is going to be jam-packed, lots of information for you all today. We have Daniela Barbosa from the Hyperledger Foundation discussing and talking about this streamed eight hours ago as of... Uh, the time that I'm recording this video and only has 118 views. So you all again are at the forefront of this information if you're paying attention to detail where they discuss and talk about blockchain based tokenization. Now, we're going to be projecting some very interesting numbers for you all today uh, when it comes to the tokenization of private equity markets. All right. So first off, Daniel Barbosa, let me just introduce her to you all so you don't think that she's just some unimportant individual. Daniel Barbosa, the general manager, the blockchain and identity and hyperledger executive and director at the Linux Foundation. Now, real fast, okay, in previous video breakdowns, we've explained to you all how systematically important the Linux Foundation is. If you haven't gone back and checked out those video breakdowns, make sure that you do so. The Linux Foundation, you guys can go over to their website. Now, we already know specifically talking about Hedera, Stellar, Ripple, Casper are all members of the Linux Foundation. Now, obviously, of course, there's thousands of systematically important companies, banks, whatever the case may be, involved with the Linux Foundation. Okay. I want you to take a second real fast and listen to what Daniela Barbosa has to say about the Linux Foundation. System sits uh, within the Linux Foundation. Pretty much every technology you are touching right now or throughout your day, the Linux Foundation has something to do with it. Hyperledger Project uh, was formed in 2015 and one of the first blockchain projects. So she pretty much just told you all how systematically important the Linux Foundation is, right? Pretty much every single thing that you own in some way, shape, or form is some way involved with the Linux Foundation. So just to wrap people's head around this, I want you all to truly understand, I just tweeted this out to you all a couple seconds ago. People don't understand how systematically important the Linux Foundation is to our global technological infrastructure. Ripple, Hedera, Stellar, and Casper are all members of the Linux Foundation who also founded the Hyperledger Foundation. So let me explain in simple terms to everyone so that way you all can comprehend and I will start by asking this question. Would the global stability of technologies be able to survive without the Linux Foundation? And the answer to that question is, the global stability of technologies may still survive without the Linux Foundation, but it would be much more challenging and less efficient. The Linux Foundation plays a vital role in the development, standardization, and adoption of critical open source technologies like Linux, Kubernetes, and many others. These technologies power many of the world's largest organizations, from banks, governments, to cloud providers and internet companies. Without the Linux Foundation's support, these technologies may not have the same level of collaboration, innovation, standardization, which could lead to fragmentation, inefficiency, and security issues. In simple terms, the Linux Foundation helps ensure that the technologies we rely on are stable, secure, and interoperable, which is essential for the global technological infrastructure to function smoothly. And it just so happens to be that our favorite utility-driven altcoins are all members of the Linux Foundation. Now, I want to take your attention back to the video from the Hyperledger meetup from Daniela Barbosa talking and discussing about more problems to come in the market. Um, a reminder to everyone, um, it is difficult times sometimes out there, um, and there's uh, there's horrible stories. Obviously, the FTX debacle last year really slowed us down uh, quite a bit, and there will be very large more. 
problems and, and issues with the industry, just like any other industry. And I just want to remind everybody that fraud and bad practices are not unique to the blockchain industry. What happened with FTX and some of the other recent failures have nothing to do with the technology, have nothing to do with what we hear at the Hyperledger and other communities have been building. So you all heard her right there confirm that there is most likely going to be more systematic shocks, more problems that happen in this market. Now think about what we've been discussing on the CypherX platform for some time now. There are over 23,700 cryptocurrencies operating in this space and over 700 exchanges operating in this space. And in my personal opinion, there's going to be some type of catalyst, whether that's a black swan catalyst or some type of regulatory framework put in place that wipes these illicit market participants out of the market and out of this ecosystem. We are patiently waiting for that to happen. So let's sit back and enjoy the show. Again, having a long-term perspective and understanding what you're involving yourself in and how early we are into this market. Now, something else I want you all to pay attention to that Daniela Barbosa says in this interview. But obviously, um, a lot of uh, when we're talking about financial infrastructure, financial systems, it's really important to understand that regulation is coming. Um, and I think many of us around the world um, you know, are seeing things like Mika, for example, in Europe as uh, bright signs in that there's going to be some guidance in the marketplaces. Um, and in the United States, we obviously know that there's going to be regulation uh, coming forward. Um, and it slows down crypto and it can certainly slow down enterprise blockchain projects. So she goes on to confirm that regulation is coming. I want to take your attention to a very interesting fundamental that just recently came out 11 hours ago, and it says breaking. U.S. House expedites hearing on crypto regulation and banking failures. Now, I won't bore you to death with this article right here, but I find this tweet interesting from Rep. Mike Flood. He goes on to say, Digital assets are at the heart of our digital economy's future. Go ahead and smash that thumbs up button for that statement right there. But the Biden administration's response is driving innovators out of America and into the hands of international competitors. So again, we know that regulatory frameworks are being put in place, not only in the United States, but globally. And in my personal opinion, in cahoots with the previous statement that Daniela Barbosa just said, is that there is going to be some type of problem that does happen in the future. And in my personal opinion, regulatory frameworks being put in place are going to shake some of these illicit market participants out of the space. For example, we see here this little tiny uh, ad right here, Pepe token, right? Meme coins, in my personal opinion, in the future are going to be a thing of the past. Anyways, moving forward. Now we're going to get into this event that took place in California. Listen to again what Daniela Barbosa has to say. But the what we saw, um, I was just at a two-day event called the Digital Asset Week here in California, where all the top banks. banks. Um, and um, asset providers were. Right. So this is the event that Daniela Barbosa was discussing and talking about that she attended. And I want to truly take your attention. This is very eye opening and something to deftly digest and think about. This event covered digital securities, digital assets and institutional crypto. And they discussed the tokenization of private equity markets. All right. So let's just take a second and look at who the speakers were and look at who was all involved in this recent event that took place. Again, this is recent. This is very updated. This is just yesterday. I'm recording this on the 4th of May. Okay. This is the 3rd of May. This event ended 2023. So this is all recent. Now, scrolling up to the top of the speakers from this event, this digital event that took place in California, we see Carolina Pham, who is she? The Washington Commissioner, Commodity Futures Trading Commission, right? And right next to her, we see Chris Larson, co-founder and executive chairman of Ripple. Pause for a second. I want you to ask yourself, how if Ripple is doing something so illegal and so bad, are they always at the forefront of all of these digital conversations, of all of these institutionalized meetups, right? It's very interesting and very questionable. In my personal opinion, the Ripple versus SEC case was systematically in place to shock the market and to stall regulation in the United States. And for some odd reason, I truly don't know why if they're doing something so illegal, how Ripple is always invited to these events as a main market participant, right? Now, who else was involved in this event? Okay, Richard Walker. We'll come back to this gentleman in just one second, but just to show you all a list of uh, attending companies that took place at this event, we see Visa, 
JP Morgan, Citi, some of the biggest banks, TD Bank, okay? We see Ripple right here, HSBC, Wells Fargo, right? We got BlackRock, we got Bain, we got Citi, okay? R3, MasterCard, all right? So major market participants operating in this space all coming together to talk about the private equity market and the digitization of securities. Now let's go back to the Hyperledger meetup and see again what Daniela Barbosa has to say. So it's estimated that the private equities market is four times the size of the public markets. Um, so, you know, uh, we, I believe, and I was just in this uh, meeting for the last two days around digital assets, um, where private equities markets will definitely see uh, a high level of adoption rates of blockchain. Um, and the reason is because you can really create liquidity in the private markets by utilizing blockchain and, and tokenization, uh, transparency in the market. Markets, which is important as you open up these markets to a greater uh, pool of users and, and, and customers. Boom. So right there, Daniela Barbosa confirms that private equity markets will see blockchain adoption. Now, I want to pause for a second real fast and get your brain juices flowing based off of something that Richard Walker from Bain & Company said months ago. So again, Richard Walker attending this conference that Daniela Barbosa attended, okay, and I want to take your attention to this Invenium, hopefully I'm not pronouncing that incorrectly, uh, event that took place or this meetup, this digital Zoom that took place. And it was mentioning and talking about the tokenization of securities. Now listen to two clips to Richard Walker saying and mentioned talking about trillions of dollars flooding this space. I'm referring to what may sound bold to some, and I think it did when it was published, but one of the headlines, you know, estimates was you know uh 16 trillion in tokenized assets by 2030 and people said well 16 trillion that represents less than two percent of the total asset value across public and private markets contrast that to what we're hearing in the market from asset managers uh, some of whom have ambition to tokenize 15 percent of their assets in the next few years and well beyond that percentage by the end of the decade so the 16 trillion Gosh, that's that's a good start, but we've got to do better. The potential is so big. Let's talk about the the, the long tail. I've got three numbers for you: fifty, one, sixty, three, thirty. And those numbers are in trillions. There's fifty trillion in private equity. That's you know private company value. There's hundred sixty trillion in public private debt, and there's three hundred and thirty trillion in global private real estate. That's 540 trillion in assets that largely are not in the financial system. Boom. So right there, we have two major future projections. Now, I also want to take your attention over here to a very interesting Bain & Company fundamental. Okay. This is the global private equity report. And as you heard from Daniela Barbosa confirming that private equities will see blockchain adoption. This is the global private equity report from Bain & Company that came out February 27, 2023. And we know that Richard Walker from Bain & Company attended that event where they discussed the tokenization of private equity markets. Now let's pay attention to detail and look at some of the highlights from this fundamental that came out February from this year. It goes on to read right here. The emerging Web3 ecosystem now boasts thousands of companies funded by approximately $94 billion in startup capital from venture funds, hedge funds, private equity, and other investors. Major companies across industries, by the way, all the companies that I'm about to name right now are all part of the Linux Foundation, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Google, and Disney, among some of them, have begun to think about how Web3 will influence their businesses and what it could unlock in terms of managing transactions and engaging with customers. Crypto and non-fungible tokens have led wealthy young consumers to come of Web3's foundational concepts like digital wallets that can be used across platforms. So why if these major institutional players and these major, like Google and Disney, I'm sure that people listening to this know somebody or maybe yourself have a Disney Plus account, okay? Well, how if these companies are adopting this technology, why would you not pay attention to it? OK, again, because the mainstream media is most likely manipulating people out of this market due to fear, uncertainty and doubt. Right. 
coming down here to further read this, it says, already we see three important ways in which Web3 is becoming increasingly relevant for private equity. And we know, we heard from Daniela Barbosa, she confirmed that private equity markets will see blockchain adoption. We see right here, I won't bore you guys, it says, as an investment theme, as a disruptive threat for the portfolio, as a tool for new funded strategies. And last but not least, if we scroll down here, the last little clip of this fundamental that I have to read for you, where it goes on to talk about private equity, it says, theoretically, any asset class can be tokenized, but some are better suited than others. In efficient, illiquid markets with easy to authenticate assets like private equity, private debt, and private real estate probably have the most to gain to becoming tokenized. Again, look at these projections. If you all enjoyed this video breakdown today, before I leave you all with this information right here, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. Don't forget that once we reach 15,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel, we're going to be doing a CyberX giveaway. Also over on our Rumble channel, where we cover offline topics that the mainstream media doesn't really normally discuss. Once we reach 1,000 subs on Rumble, we are going to be giving away $100 along with the CyberX hat and t-shirt. So make sure that you click the link in the description down below to follow us on Rumble. This article, and I will leave you all with this, says, tokenization will most likely benefit private capital markets that are easy to authenticate, but relatively inaccessible to many investors. And look at these freaking numbers. We see debt, global debt, $160 trillion of private global debt, real estate. Look at this number right here, $327 trillion, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot stress enough. We are so early on in this market. And to revert back to the tweet that I put out to you all, all in correlation with the Linux Foundation and the, and the Hyperledger Foundation, we know that Ripple, Hedera, Stellar, and Casper are always at the forefront of these technological innovations. Many blessings to you all. Do your own personal research. I'm not telling you guys to go out there and buy XRP, XLM, HBAR, or Casper. I know what it is that I'm parking my money on, and I also am well aware of the risk that I am taking as an early adopter of this technology. You all should also do the same. Many blessings to you all. As always, be cognizant, be aware, and I will see you all in the next video breakdown.